Hi, this is Dr. John Bergdorf. In the previous video, we looked at what was meant by a system of equations and what was meant by the solution of a system of equations or solving a system of equations. Particularly, we were looking at linear equations in two variables. Now, in that video, we primarily just showed how you could check, but we didn't really talk about how you could go about finding those solutions. In this video and the next, we're going to talk about two methods that are really nice for solving systems of linear equations in two variables. The first of these is known as substitution. Now, in general, it works this way, but we will have to you know, go through some detail to see how, how it really works. Solve one equation for one variable and substitute into the other equation. So the way substitution works is this. You look at your equations and see if you can solve one of the equations for one variable. That means getting one variable by itself. And if you look at the example I've got right here, we already have that done. Uh, the second equation is already solved for y. Uh, the y is by itself. So there's not much to do here. What we do then is we take that and substitute into the other equation. Now what do we mean by that? So I'm going to go back to the first equation and where I see the y, I'm going to replace it by what this equation says y is equal to, in other words, by 2x minus 3. And then 2x plus 5y equals 9. So this looks just like the original equation, but where the y is, I replace it with 2x minus 3. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, if you look at that, what that does is it changes the system to where it only has one variable in it. And then we can use what we already know about solving equations with one variable to at least get the value of x. So we would, for example, distribute the 5 over the parentheses and get 2x plus 10x minus 15 equals 9. We would combine our like terms and get 12x minus 15 equal 9. And to solve for x, we could add 15 on both sides. That gives me 12x equal 24. And to get the x completely by itself, divide both sides by 12. I'll start another row of work here. And that would give me x is equal to 2. And that was pretty easy. Now the deal is, a solution of a, uh, an equation in two variables has to have both an x and a y. So we're going to have to figure out how do we get the corresponding y value. Well, if you take the same equation that you used for substituting and take the value that you've just figured out, you can substitute in again, and that would give you the y value. So y is equal to 2 times, and then substituting the 2 for x, minus 3. y is equal to 4 minus 3. y is equal to 1. Now that essentially gives me the ordered pair that works. Uh, we would have, if I write this as an ordered pair, the ordered pair 2 comma 1 Remembering the first coordinate is the x value, the second coordinate is the y value, and that's the solution of that system. Depending on how your book likes answers, it may just ask you to leave the answer like that, or it may ask you to present this as a solution set, in which case you take that one ordered pair and write it in the set braces. That's it. Let's do another example. So again, the, the substitution method asks us to solve one equation for one variable and then substitute into the other. Now, in this one, we don't have any of our variables all by themselves yet, so we're going to have to do some work. Now, we can take either equation and solve it for either variable. I can take the top equation and solve it for x, the top equation and solve it for y, the bottom equation and solve it for x, 
or the bottom equation and solve it for y. What you do is you look and see if any one of those things might be easier than another. And the fact that in the second equation, there's no coefficient in front of the x except 1 tells me that I believe the easiest thing to do this time would be to solve the second equation for x. I can solve either equation for either variable. But if I do anything else, I'm going to eventually have to divide and end up with fractions. This one's easier. So if I take that second equation and solve it for x, I would, first of all, subtract 4y from both sides. That gives me x is equal to negative 9 minus 4y. That's what we call solving for x, getting the x by itself. Take that result, substitute it into the other equation where you see the x, and that would look something like this. So 5 times, and then replacing the x with minus 9 minus 4y minus 3y equals 1. That now is going to be an equation in y only, which is perfect. Distribute the 5 across, and you would get negative 45, negative 20y, minus 20y, minus 3y equals 1. Combine like terms, minus 20y, minus 3y is minus 23y. Add 45 to both sides, so negative 45 minus 23y plus 45 equals 1 plus 45. That will give me negative 23y equal 46. To solve for y, divide both sides by negative 23, and y would be negative 2. That's at least the y value. Now to get the x value, go back, look for whatever equation you use to solve for x, and substitute there. So the, the uh, equation we had for x was x equal negative 9 minus 4y. Let's just write that down. And now we know what the value of y is. We can substitute that in. x is equal to negative 9 minus 4 times negative 2. And we can then find the value of x. So this would be x is equal to negative 9 plus 8. Negative times negative is positive. x is equal to negative 1. We want to express our answer as an ordered pair. So we figured out that y is negative 2 and x is negative 1. And if we're asked to write that as uh, a solution set, it would look like that. That's the substitution method. Now in another video, I'll, video, I'll show you another method called the elimination method.